Hello, my friends. MPT3K here with a video about how to use your phone, your mobile phone, whether it be an Android phone or an iPhone, which I have here, as a remote camera for your OBS installation. I've done this before at uh, Freego Watch, where I've taken a, a remote camera, remote phone on um, Osmo gimbal and walked around a little bit. It works pretty well. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it. It should be really quick. It's super easy. It's just another ND, It's just another source. But uh, quickly, I want to mention something about the technology we're using. And I'm going to read it because I don't have it installed in my brain. Network Device Interface, or NDI, is a royalty-free software standard developed by NewTek. NewTek is a company you should know about if you're using OBS. It'd be great to look at NewTek because these guys pioneered all the streaming stuff. Um, Anyway, that it's developed by NewTek to enable video compatible products to communicate, deliver, and receive broadcast quality video in high quality, low latency manner. Uh, it's frame accurate and suitable for switching in a live production environment. Basically, that means that they developed a protocol that allows video and audio over Ethernet. Okay, so they built a system called the TriCaster that a long time ago was called Video Toaster, but now it's the TriCaster and it's used from production studios. I've owned the TriCaster before and I've used it. It's amazing. So when I moved over to OBS, it's like OBS is like a poor man's TriCaster, I want to say. One of the technologies they developed is called NDI, which allows you to plug an Ethernet into your TriCaster and then pick up audio and video, uh, uncompressed audio and video, HDMI quality. Now they can do up to 4K over Ethernet. Ethernet has a ton of bandwidth and is super capable of production environments carrying, um, instead of running audio cables and HDMI cables and the SDI cables, you can run one Ether and you're good. Now, the caveat about us using NDI as OBS users is that it requires, new tech spec requires a gigabit network. Okay, let that sink in. This is not something that's going to be easy to do over Wi-Fi, although it can be done over Wi-Fi, and I've seen a lot of people do it, and I've done it successful, but there will be, successfully, but there will be limitations, okay? So it really wants a plugged-in Cat5e gigabit network to work. Now, a gigabit network will allow you to have up to 10, they say up to 10 NDI um, sources. Realistically, it's like five or six uh, good NDI sources before you saturate your network, okay? But even still, that's f like five free cameras that are just plugged in. NDI also, uh, once you have this NDI plugin in OBS, you'll be able to use any NDI source, not just your phone. So it's basically a client-server kind of thing, right? Uh, well, not client-server. Uh, I don't want to get into that because that might not be correct. But anyway, uh, they're, they're basically... Once you install um, an NDI plugin into OBS, you can fire up an NDI uh, external and it'll recognize it over your network. Got that? Um, okay, so we're going to do it with, whenever I've done it, I've had uh, the, the main system, the main OBS system on Ethernet, not on, a, on, not on the same Wi-Fi as the phone or whatever. Okay? Um, you can try this over 5G. It may or may not work. It really depends on your network. But the way I've always had it was OBS is on a system that's plugged into the Ethernet, and then the phone uses the Wi-Fi that's shared off of the same router. Okay? Cool. Now, with that said, let's install it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to grab the, ND, uh, the OBS NDI. As of this recording, it's 4.7.1. And I'll leave a link in the description of this page. But if you go to, uh, what's his name? Palakis on GitHub, and I'm sending you to GitHub because that's where it's mostly maintained. And you find this, you can find it for, you have to have OBS version 22 or above, because this utilizes NDI 4.0, which is the, I think the latest is 4.1, but this utilizes the NDI 4.0 runtimes, which have greater uh, capacity, greater bandwidth, they support 4K. We're not gonna be doing 4K, trust me. We're gonna be doing 1080. Uh, install instructions are right here on the GitHub, very easy. And uh, if, you, uh, if you get the installer package for Windows, it will install the plugin into OBS and the NDI runtimes that are needed. It will do them both. Otherwise, you have to install the plugin and the runtimes yourself. Just get the installer package. For a Mac, same deal. If you get the, uh, if you get the where's the Mac package? I don't know, whatever. You can just download the, oh, the, the PKG file 
and in. I'm on a Mac right now, but it doesn't matter. NDI is platform agnostic. And if you can hear my son in the background, that's awesome. But I got to do this video. <laughs> All right. Once you've installed it, um, you go to you. I'm going to remove it right now. If, if you go to your OBS, once you've installed it, you l run OBS. Then you, when you hit your plus for a new source, you'll see NDI source is a new source that you can set. Okay. So we're going to choose NDI source and then you can, you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to just keep it named NDI source, hit okay. And it's basic, you know, one-on-one source adding to OBS. But now we have source name. Now notice I don't have anything in here and it's not allowing me to pick anything. That's because I don't have any other NDI uh, sources running on my network, on my local network. There's nothing running. It's not recognizing anybody out there. So if you haven't run the app on your phone, it's gonna show blank because there's nothing out there. Uh, but I wanna, do wanna show you this. Um, bandwidth usage, you can set it to highest, lowest, or audio only, which is nice. Lowest means it's gonna use, it's gonna try and use as, as the minimal amount of, of a bandwidth on your network, so it will result in a, a lower quality file, but you'll still get uh, you'll still get an image. Uh, sync, I don't mess with hardware acceleration and fixed alpha blending and all that stuff. You can play with on your own. The only other thing I want to mention is the latency mode. There's normal, which they're saying is safe, which means it's about a second, about two seconds of lag between the camera. And, you know, and getting back here, if you choose low experimental, it's about a half a second or a second of lag, depending. I've chosen uh, low all the time. It says experimental, but it works just fine. Okay, so we don't have any sources yet, but I'm just going to hit OK because you can keep the source in there. You can choose different sources. Whenever you launch this here, it will search for new sources. Okay, so if you don't get anything the first time, hit cancel or hit OK. Go to your phone and launch. Uh, phones. Okay, so I have two different phones here. I have an an old iPhone 6s, and I have an old Galaxy uh, Note 5. Both of which work fine with this. If you have phones more powerful than these, way to go. Awesome. But you don't need phones more powerful than these, I don't think. Um, now, once again, I'm on a gigabit network. Okay, so uh, you uh, for Android users. There are various apps that do support NDI, the, but there is one free app by NewTek themselves, and this is it. This is NDI 1.1 APK, and I'll leave a link in the description below once again to where you can download this. This is totally free. You need to know how to install an APK on your phone, though, because you're not going to find this in the Play Store. This is totally free. It's 1.1, but I found that it's sufficient enough to do everything I need to do in OBS, so it gives me a nice... HD screen, I say HD because I'm not sure if it's HD, but it looks really good. The audio and everything, and it works just fine, and it's totally free. Um, otherwise, search on the Play Store and see if there are any other NDI-capable apps. I don't know if NewTek actually came out with an Android version of an uh, of a NDI app for, uh, yeah, for NDI. I do know this one is free and totally cool. And so if you're an iPhone user and you can get your hands on a cheap Android phone, maybe do that because that way you get this whole thing for free. If you're an Apple user, if you're an iPhone user, you're in luck, but you're also not in luck. Once again, search the Apple Store for NDI compatible um, um, uh, phone apps. NewTek's official app is $20, uh, but it supports NDI 4.0 and I'm sure you'll get upgrades, and once they go to 4.1, 4.2, 5.0, whatever. Um, it has a few more features, but at the end of the day, it kind of basically does the same thing the Android one does, okay? You do have different modes. So the iPhone, I'll show you in a minute, the iPhone is, allow, allows you to render in different modes. You might be able to get some more, uh, uh, you know, you might, you might get, a, get better results with the iPhone version, but this is the only official Apple iPhone um, app for NDI. If you know of any new ones, if you know, if there are a lot of apps on the App Play Store and the, and the Apple Store that say they support NDI. I tried a couple of them and it didn't recognize them at all. So your mileage may vary, but these two work. All right, so here we are at the final stage. I'm gonna first show you with my Galaxy Note 5 with the free app. I'm gonna turn the, my app, my phone on, and I have the new tech app you know, installed, that's my cool phone. 
and I'm going to activate it, which brings me to this screen here. See, and it's just it's just showing me, right? You can switch which camera it is. The important thing about the free app is if you don't hit this little <laughs> button here. Let's see if I can hit it. Can I hit it. There we go. If you don't hit the little record button that turns red, it's not broadcasting, which means you won't see a signal. You will see the phone show up in NDI Source. So if I double click this now and go to source name, there it is, localhost, Samsung, SM, whatever, blah, 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 blah. Um, now remember, this is on Wi-Fi right now, which is the same network that my OBS installation is on, which is on in a router on Ether. Okay, so this is not competing with anything else on the Wi-Fi. That's very important. If I tried to fire both of these up, they're both going to compete over Wi-Fi, and one of them is going to be choppy. So for this, for this reason, you probably only need one, but you can. I would say you can only safely get away with one, depending on your network. You're only only going to get with one with one camera. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to come down to. Latency mode, I'm going to put it on. I'll show you the difference. Normal is, boom, so this is normal. So you can see the delay. Move, move, year. It's not bad. And if this is a remote camera where that one second or half a second delay doesn't matter, then you're, you're in like Flint. Um, it's bringing audio over to, as you can see, it's um, really blasting it. You, you can see NDI source is bringing audio over audio, so it's good. It's pretty good audio, all right? Um, and now at this point, I could option to uh, hit the, there's a little button on here that allows me to change the camera to front facing. All right, so now, now, it's, now it's on me. And I noticed every time you mess around with settings after you've launched the camera, the delay becomes longer. So you might want to get your settings right first and then start messing around with things. But I could also change the quality. So... That's like the maximum quality, all right? And I'm leaving it in the native. Of course, you can stretch that screen. You can make it as big as you want. Um, and if I go to NDI source again and choose latency mode low, hit OK, it kicks into low latency mode. So that's kind of really super, super quick. Notice the rolling shutter. You don't want to do... Rolling shutter is that, that tearing, that kind of screen weirdness that's happening. These phones don't typically have really good, um, really high shutter speeds. Well, at least this, 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 at least this one doesn't. All right. So that's the Android version. I'm going to hit stop. I lose my signal. I'm going to shut this down. All right. I'm going to close it out on the Android so it's not competing with the iPhone. All right. So let's turn the iPhone on. Five, blah, 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 blah. That's my password. I almost told you my password. And let's launch the. NDI, where is it? It's like the NDI, whatever, that, that guy right there, the $20 app. So this $20 app on the app, iPhone, once again, it has a little button down there. If, if this NDI is not engaged, if it's white, it's not broadcasting. If it's blue, it's broadcasting. What's nice is it defaults to broadcasting. Once again, you also have a lot of options on the bottom of the screen. Sorry about this. So you have options for exposure and all this other neat stuff. Same deal. Um, I'm going to go back now. Since I'm since I'm running it, it should show up. It does. Manu's iPhone NDI X. Blah blah blah. We're gonna just go right to low. Okay, it's already there. I'm gonna hit OK. And there we go. Now look at how huge it is. So this <laughs> so this is representative of NDI 4.0. They can get away with much larger um, screen sizes. This is ridiculous, right? So I would probably, I would do one of two things. I would shrink it down, right? I can say, uh, let's see, transform, fit to screen. So it fits to screen. Or uh, a better option for you guys would be to, there's a little cogwheel on there. Feel free to play with these because you, you guys are all smart. But there's a little cogwheel that lets me change the resolution three times. So this is maximum. This is kind of native. So this is now a smaller resolution. It fit to my screen. And then there's one more smaller resolution below that, and that's a four by three. And you could probably gain, depending on the quality you need, right? This has less rolling shutter, actually. So this phone may be a little better. 
But depending on the quality you need, you can down res on the Apple version to meet the quality you want. You can turn on your, uh, you know, you can turn on your, your flash. You can set up your, your uh, lower thirds, uh, I mean, not your, uh, your, uh, your grid, so you can get your thirds in. There's a lot of neat things you can do. You can turn on and off the, the microphone. You can zoom in and out, okay? So that's basically it. You've got all the things you need to do to get this to work. Um, the only other thing, and I'm going to just get rid of that. The only other thing I'm going to say is if you are using a phone, Maybe you should, if you're going to use it a lot, get yourself a, a gimbal. Get yourself a nice, small motorized gimbal. Uh, I did a review of the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, which is a terrific, terrific gimbal. It's about $120. Um, it's amazing. I don't have it here right now, but uh, get yourself something that's steady. Or, or, or hold, don't hold your phone in your hand. Hold, hold the phone in like a selfie stick or something like that, because that tends to smooth out movements. Last thing you want to do is have a jittery mess when you're moving around and your viewers are trying to watch a jittery mess. All right, that's it for me and NDI. NDI has a ton of more uses than just phones. There's PTZ cameras, um, which is pan, tilt, zoom cameras that uh, you can control through NDI. Uh, there's a whole interface that you can do stuff with. Uh, there's, NDI is huge, so if you start to welcome NDI into your OBS workflow, you're gonna be, you're gonna be blown away. But, the only caveat is, right, Ethernet is the way it was meant to be done. If you try and do Wi-Fi, you can get away with a little bit. We're getting away with a little bit of a Wi-Fi, but it's gonna be tricky. Um, and your mileage may vary. So, good luck! Thanks for watching.